In 2005, Microsoft changed the landscape of completing games by introducing the platform achievement system on the Xbox 360. PlayStation and Steam soon followed suit, and the culture of achievement hunting was born. But let's be real, not all achievements feel good. Some of them are downright awful, requiring a huge amount of effort, time, and luck, and don't really offer any true sense of achievement, resulting in some of my least favorite journeys as the completionist. Now it is worth noting, I'm viewing all these achievements through the lens of the completionist. In complete a game a week is certainly tougher sometimes than casually grinding away on a single game that you are passionate about, so take that as you will. Some of these achievements I've encountered and already lamented, while others are for celebrated games that I've never touched because the achievements are so horrific that I just can't bring myself to even consider playing them. From the unfulfilling to the near impossible, these are, in my opinion, some of the worst top 10 achievements of all time. Number 10! So Sonic Unleashed is one of those Sonic games that I secretly love but also have a ton of frustrations with. Although I personally didn't mind the Werehog gameplay as much as some, nothing hurt me more in this game than the hard-boiled achievement. Now this achievement has you completing a time trial in the final level of Sonic Unleashed, Eggman Land. Eggman Land is huge, intimidating, and switches back and forth between the Hedgehog and Werehog gameplay. And when I say this level is huge, I'm not kidding around. The fastest time you have to beat the stage in is less than 45 minutes. No level in any game should ever last more than 10 minutes when it's a level-based system. So I completed this game a few years ago on the PlayStation 3, and I know now that that was my first mistake because I encountered all of the following in a single level. Broken platforming, chugging frame rates, cheap enemy placement, and bugs. Lots and lots of so many random bugs. Apparently the way to play this though is on the Xbox 360. An achievement should extend a player's joy from experiencing your game, but Hard Boiled doesn't know when to quit, offering up the perfect perfect Venn diagram of headaches that together is utter misery. Can I start over? Number nine. This is one that I personally did only a couple of months ago. Although the 2011 Mortal Kombat reboot offered a new coat of pain to the Hellish series, it also brought with it a gauntlet of needlessly cruel dedication. Enter the My Kung Fu is Stronger achievement. For the My Kung Fu is Stronger achievement, you have to win 100 matches, execute 100 fatalities, perform 150 x-ray combos, spill 10,000 pints of blood, and play the game for 24 hours with every single character on the roster. So let's break it down. On the PS3 version, there are 28 characters because of Kratos being playable. In the 360 version, which is the one I did for the show, there are 20 27 fighters. So that translates to 2,700 matches won, 2,700 fatalities committed, 4,050 x-ray combos, 270,000 pints of blood, and literally four weeks of straight up playtime with each character. And worst of all, that's not even including the four DLC characters. Word of advice, do this achievement before you install or buy the DLC. Look, in the end, this takes away anything remotely enjoyable about the series. This franchise is remembered for getting to do insanely violent feats with friends and pull them off in ridiculous situations. One could argue that yes, it's meant to be done over the course of many, many years, but come on, that's still too much. With this achievement, you're just a machine waiting to do the same button presses one after another. This doesn't feel like Mortal Kombat. It feels like menial tasks. And the worst thing a game like this can do is be boring. Number eight. Whenever I ask folks what some of their favorite platformers are beyond your Mario's and Donkey Kong's, Rayman comes up a lot, and an all-time favorite amongst many is Rayman Legends. But I'll never complete this game because of the truly awesome achievement, which when I learned about it, I realized is anything but awesome. To earn this, you must get an awesomeness rating of 11, which equates to 6,000 experience points, which you get by completing every level and bonus challenge in the main game. Pretty simple, right? However, once you beat the main campaign, you'll only be at level 10 with 4,184 points. To reach that 11th rank, you need to complete daily and weekly online challenges challenges, pitting you against, on average, 1,800 people around the world. Look, 
I have a bit of an issue with these online based achievements. I really hate them. More often than not, they are based on how well you compete against others. And if you're constantly picking up different games like I do, then it's hard to get that much better than other people who have been playing these games for years. And Rayman Legends is no different. Depending on how well you rank amongst thousands of other players, you can get as many as 50 points or as low as one. But getting the 50 points means you have to be in the top 1% of players. And there's no way that's going to happen every time. So unless you're incredible, it's going to be a goddamn drip feed in the ocean of earning those 1,860 points that you need. Can you imagine spending two years working on one stupid achievement? It is because of this that I will never try to complete this game. Look, this is not truly awesome. It is not huge place. Oh, snap. That's right, everyone. It's the phrase of the day. And to celebrate, we've unleashed the Huge Plays t-shirt available for pre-order right now. Get it at thecompletionist.com. You know what game this t-shirt would be? Huge Plays. Number 7. All right, the first Gears of War game had the achievement seriously, where you had to kill 10,000 online opponents in versus mode. Gears of War 2 had seriously 2.0, where you had to kill 100,000 opponents total. But Gears of War 3 takes the cake with seriously 3.0. This has you reaching level 100 and earning all 65 Onyx medals, the highest rating you can get for various challenges. Now this may sound a lot easier than it is, but trust me, it's not. What started off as simply kill a bunch of people in whatever way you can has now transformed into do tons of specific tasks thousands of times. Don't just kill tens of thousands of people, kill 1,000 with heavy weapons and revive another 1,000 and be MVP in a match 500 times. But seriously, 3.0 isn't on this list simply because it's inexcusable grind. It's on here because it takes away from the freedom of playing the game. Although it is fun running around, taking cover and killing as many people as possible, it's not fun when you're told you have to play a certain way. I want to experience the game, but I don't want to just stab people with knives a thousand times unless that's how I want to play. These kinds of achievements, in my opinion, break game immersion all the way through and remind you that you're just sitting on a couch and pushing the same buttons again and again. And that is not fun. Seriously. Number six. Most achievements are on here because of how much of a time sink they are. However, there are a few rare achievements that are literally impossible because of conditions beyond your control. And it's something that you want even though you know you shouldn't. Oh my f***ing god, almost no one has done this achievement. Meinlieben from Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is the same as Iron Man mode in The New Order. You cannot save, and if you die once, you have to start all the way over again. However, this game is much, much harder. It's not about understanding how to play the game, it's about knowing every nook and cranny of every piece of code in this f***ing game and being able to effectively waltz through the hail of bullshit toughness that the game throws at you. You must be a frame perfect at all times, which takes more dedication than training for a decathlon. But there's one more twist to this. Wolfenstein 2 received DLC, and all three of them got the Mein treatment. So you don't have to do this just once for the main game. You have to do it once for the main game, and then three more f***ing 
fucking times if you want that achievement to pop. It's fitting that Mein Lieben translates to my life because it will completely take up your life struggling to earn this stupid achievement. Number four. Oh boy, now this is one I just did recently and it's still pumping my veins from all the anger and frustration I experienced. Dead Rising at face value isn't a hard horror game. You can easily reach max level and get all the weapons for tackling most of the achievements. But the scariest achievement hands down in Dead Rising is the 7 day survivor. Not because of the gameplay, but because of the bugs you may or may not encounter. Dead Rising is riddled with bugs that could break your game at any instant. And 7 day survivor is an endless mode that asks you to survive for, you guessed it, seven in-game days. Each in-game day translates to about two hours. So that's about 14 hours straight of non-stop zombie murdering gameplay. But if we're being honest, it's mostly just sitting around and eating food that you hoarded and just waiting for your life to drain and then eating it and then waiting for that to drain, then eating again, then eating again, then eating again until you're out of food. But that's beside the point. So factor in the exhaustingly long play time with Dead Rising's bugs and you realize that it is a thing of nightmares. Now you could be five hours in and enter the mall at the wrong time, causing the game to freeze and that attempt becomes null and void. There are a ton of these game breaking glitches that you have no control over. You have to have done research in advance to know that these glitches exist and then be aware of how to avoid them. Certain sections of the mall become unplayable at certain times because of these glitches and these glitches get translated into all the ports. Your main opponent in the game isn't the zombies or your health draining slowly. Your main opponent could be the game itself. I said in the Dead Rise New Game Plus episode recently that this is one of the worst achievements I have ever completed, and I stand by that. This is an insane waste of the player's time and is no way worth all the effort. It makes you feel brain dead and just want to bash your own head in before all is said and done. Number three. Age of Empires 2 is the classic that was re-released on Steam in 2013, updated to modernity including achievements. And while many of those are long and incredibly difficult, they're not terrible. It's the kind of thing that I would expect from an incredibly deep RTS based on many different civilizations. No civilization is based on simplicity or speed. But the Dark Ages rush, also known as Early Adopter Achievement, boils my blood because I can already never get it ever. Because I already missed the opportunity to get it. Because in order to get this achievement, you needed to have pre-ordered the game. Now this, my friends, is low. This achievement upsets me morally. You should not have to pay to be any part of a game. And you're talking to the guy who literally paid his way through Marvel's Avengers so that you wouldn't have had to have. That's not progression. That's a scam, my friends. And for any completionist out there who wants to put themselves through the gauntlet of beating this classic RTS, I'd say this is a civilization that is best left forgotten. Or just go play Civilization. Number two. You know, the worst thing about this achievement is that at any given point in my adult college career, uh, I actually would have gone for this bad boy. There have been many, but of all the marathon achievements out there, the Bladder of Steel achievement in Rock Band 2 is simply cruel. You have to be the endless playlist mode, a mode where you play every single song in the game in a row. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, that's approximately six hours and 15 minutes of constant rocking. And here's the kicker, you have to do it without pausing. You cannot hit the start button. You can't accidentally hit the home button. Your controller cannot become disconnected. If any of these things happen, you have to start over. Your attempt was all for nothing, which is mentally awful. But beyond your mindset and regardless of whether you're on guitar, bass, drums, or vocals, this is an absolute beast of an ask of any player, forcing you to run the risk of cramping, vocal strain, and likely God damn fatigue and dehydration friends i should not have to plan my diet around playing video games i shouldn't have to hold my pee or not eat for six hours for fear of ruining a run this isn't just ridiculously difficult this is unhealthy if i am playing a game i want to be able to drink in pee as much as i want especially if i'm drinking some delicious g fuel g fuel a proud sponsor of the completionist this is a bit but it's also real use code completionist for 10 percent off Let's go, baby. Let's get a shaker. Fists on cups. And then maybe one day of flavor. Let's see. Number one. 
I mentioned earlier, as much as I can in this video and other videos you've seen of mine, hopefully, that uh, I despise online achievements. The learning curve on some of these is staggering, and the skill ceiling being simply other players can be daunting or impossible to crack. And Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter set the ceiling so f***ing high that I just want to scream. Now, beyond being a word salad title of every combat game out there, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter sports the achievement World World Champion. Anybody out in the audience want to take a guess as to what World Champion does? Anyone? Well, in case you didn't guess by now, uh, it doesn't want you to just be really good. Uh, they want you to be the best in the whole wide world. Yes, the whole world. Every other person who is playing this game is your competition, including the person who is currently the number one player in the world in a game that has had a constant fan base since 2006, which is f***ing insane. The best person in the entire world. You literally have to devote your entire life to playing a single video game and nothing else. Now, this sounds like I'm making fun of FGC people or people who are into esports. That's not what I'm getting at. I am simply referring to you have to literally be the number one person in the whole goddamn world to get this achievement. I mean, naturally, you got to be able to cheese this, right? It's 2020. No one's playing this game anymore. Well, you kind of can. If you want to pour a bunch of f***ing money down the drain, you can totally complete it. Essentially, you have to create multiple Xbox Live accounts so you can have online battles against yourself to raise that single account score. But in order to play against yourself, you would need multiple Xbox 360s running, all of which would need gold accounts on Xbox Live, which is a lot of money a year, which is a hell of a money pit before you even get to the actual gameplay to f***ing grind, what I've estimated is more than 600 f***ing hours, which is just f***ing stupid. Only 88 people ever have completed this achievement. Less than 0.1% of all of the people who played Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, and that is utterly sickening. Now, what I just described with regards to getting multiple Xboxes, multiple Xbox Live Gold accounts, and multiple people to play with you seems like a chore. And it is. But let me be the first to tell you that this is how I do my job. <laughs> there are so many episodes of The Completionist in which I have had to cheese my way through the leaderboards to unlock achievements, trophies, and any kind of unlockables that are above the pay grade of just simply getting a platinum trophy. I guess what I'm saying is this is not how people should complete games. And truth be told, it's not meant to be that way. But you have to remember what I said at the very beginning of this video. These achievements are through the eyes of a completionist. And this is what I have to do every week when someone's like, hey, play an online game that no one plays anymore. Or worse, play an online game that everyone's playing right now. The World Champion Achievement combines the worst aspects of all the previous entries of this list. It is unnecessarily difficult and monotonous. It takes an inexcusable amount of time, and you seemingly can only even possibly reach it if you throw down to break an already broken achievement. This is not gaming. This is obsession and the worst that game achievements have to offer. So at the end of the day, I guess what I'm saying is uh, avoid all multiplayer online game achievements unless they're doable, unless they're fun. But at the end of the day, uh, I may not be the world champion, but this achievement is the fucking worst. And that, my friends, is my current list of my top 10 worst achievements in games. Big shout outs to Twitch chat who recommended this to me while I was playing games over on Twitch. You can check out my live streams, twitch.tv slash the completionist. I am completing all the new game plus games. I've got 20 left. So come join me. It's getting down to the wire. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.